top stories. Angry taxi drivers call for more regulation around the Bridgetown port. The Fairchild Street bus terminal gets a spruce up. And West Indies captain Dinesh Ramblin tells fans not to lose hope. Welcome to Nation News from Monday, December 22nd, 2014. I'm Natasha Beckles. No matter where you are in the world, at home or abroad, Nation News keeps you connected with what's happening in Barbados. Through our website, video newscast, and online e-papers. So stay connected with Nation News. Your news, your time, your way. Tempers flared and boiled over among taxi drivers operating at the Bridgetown port on Monday. They protested against what they call the unfair practice, which allows big tour operators to operate a shuttle service to Bridgetown. The taxi drivers say a tour operator moved four large loads of passengers to the city on the free service before it was eventually halted by the chief of security. They say they are left with the crumbs and are calling on authorities to regulate the process. The Fairchild Street bus terminal is now a bit more pleasant and appealing for commuters following a $34,000 enhancement from telecommunications company Lime. Minister of Transport and Works Michael Ashley toured the terminal and its environs on Monday along with officials of the ministry and the transport board. The terminal was painted and power washed and it now has free Wi-Fi. Lime's chief financial officer Patrick Hinkson says students can now do their homework online while they wait for the bus. Minister Lashley welcomed the initiative. Anything like this that will save them money and that will result in some satisfaction to the traveling public will be actually encouraged and supported. So this is the start and hopefully the new year will ask um, the corporate sector, other businesses to come forward and assist us in terms of uh, what we do in terms of this terminal or uh, even in relation to transportation. A mother and daughter were injured in an accident along Maxwell Main Road, Christchurch, on Monday. They were struck by a car driven by a female who, according to reports, ran off the road and hit a wall, also striking the pair who were walking along the road. Prime Minister Frondel Stewart says his government won't be backing down from its current economic policy, nor will they be going to the International Monetary Fund. In a statement over the weekend, Mr. Stewart said they were firmly committed to the policy which was already starting to show positive results. This comes in light of yet another downgrade, this time from BB- to B by Standard & Poor's rating agency. And opposition leader Mia Motley has called on the Stewart administration to stop dismissing the comments by the rating agencies since they were impartial. Former Prime Minister Owen Arthur has also appealed to Stuart to level with the people and give a clear statement on the economic strategy. Staff of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital are now better able to care for patients in the Richard Hayes Medical Intensive Care Unit. This is due to the recent donation of several pieces of equipment by the Broadway to Barbados Charitable Trust. QEA CEO Dr. Dexter James thanked the group for the donation. This is a clear case of the private sector partnering with the Prince Edward Hospital in finding new and creative ways to finance the health system. It is not the panacea for solving the sustainable financing for the hospital, but certainly it is part of the evolving model of embracing philanthropy and as well as the diaspora in trying to move um, uh, the health system forward. In sport, West Indies captain Dinesh Ramdin has warned detractors not to write the team off just yet. The tourists were humiliated by an innings and 220 runs in the opening test against South Africa on Saturday. Heading into the Boxing Day test starting in Port Elizabeth, where they pulled off their only success on the last tour of South Africa seven years ago, Ramdin is hopeful of victory. Meantime, the West Indies Cricket Board completed a shake-up of its teams for the shorter versions of the game over the weekend. 23-year-old Barbadian all-rounder Jason Holder has been named captain of the one-day team, taking over from Dwayne Bravo, who has been left out of the squad. Kiran Pollard and Darren Sammy have been named in the 2020 side only. And finally, a New Jersey public school principal has been demoted to vice principal and transferred to another school, all because of a misspelled sign. Parents discovered that the words December and reports were spelled incorrectly while the number one was placed backwards. The sign went unnoticed for more than a week, but then a photo of it went viral on social media, prompting the school to take action against the principal.
And that's it for Nation News. For more, log on to our website, nationnews.com, as well as YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And pick up your Daily Nation on Tuesday.